All right, what's going on, guys? So over the past few weeks, here on the channel, we've been reevaluating everything we thought we knew about Elden Ring's lore, framing many of the themes and concepts we discussed in the past under the new light of the DLC gameplay trailer. And that's because many of those themes, such as the Crucible, the Erd Tree, Queen Merica, Mikola, and many others, will be playing a part in this new story. And one of the main questions we have to ask is, well, how much? And how deep down the rabbit hole do we have to go when it comes to the lore of these themes in order to find the truth. So today we have even more points that we're going to discuss. Interesting observations that you guys have been pointing out to me in the comments and in our Discord community that more than warrant an investigation. So as we dive into that today, if you enjoyed these lore theories and want to stay up to date on all things Elden Ring DLC, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and now let's begin. To start off today, let's take a look at some material that came out outside the trailer. On the official website of Elden Ring's DLC, this image was used as the background. And surprisingly, there are details here that we haven't seen before. First and foremost, the sigil that's most prominent. It's an image of two snakes overlapping, which of course has relation to Mesmer, as we discussed in great detail a few videos ago. Although the one notable thing about this is that the snakes don't have wings, which I take to mean that this sigil might not be exclusive to Mesmer, but may represent his faction or some other alignment that he belongs to. And it is quite different than the one we see on the Collector's Edition box, which I think represents him much better with the theme of Impalement and the Braid of Royalty. So perhaps what we see in this other one may be the sigil of a new magic type, or perhaps the symbol of worship of the old snake religion. But my biggest question is, what is that symbol at the bottom, beneath the snakes? Y'all let me know what you think about that one. But going back to the full image, something in the background caught my eye a lot. If we look back behind the tree, we can see a whole different branch, or perhaps even another tree, that was unable to be viewed from the angles in the trailer. Now take a look at the shape of it, because if you watched our last video, this should immediately sound some alarm. Arms, because in that, we discuss these statues that can be found in the Round Table Hold and along the road leading to the Grand Lift of Dectus. The extra branch in the image and the shape of the tree and the statue are almost identical. And here's what we were theorizing about this. So here's the theory. Queen Merica grew her own Erd Tree in the Land of Shadow and in doing so became a god. But her tree was not the only Erd Tree, which is why it had to be taken to the Lands Between as a sapling and grown over there. This is what the statues commemorate. And it's also the reason Deep Root depths is home to many other trees, because the Erd tree choked them out and grew over all of them. Now of course that was just a carefully constructed theory with some circumstantial evidence, but now that we see this exact shape of tree, I think it definitely lends more credence to the idea that these statues are representative of that culture found in the Land of Shadow and whatever ability they possess to grow an Erd tree. But the main point of that video was this character here, and another point of evidence that may relate to this power to grow an Erd tree that many of you pointed out to me is how similar this golden spike we see in the DLC trailer looks to the skeletal makeup of the Elden Beast. And this one was very striking to me, because the Elden Beast is essentially a creature, somewhat of a parasite, living inside a host, in this case America and Radagon, as an envoy of the Greater Will. Now as to the extent of its power, we don't quite know, but due to the final bit of the cutscene in the arena in which we fight it, there is undoubtedly a tie to the power of the Erd Tree, and the symbolism of this spike may represent that same power in some regard. Now the question is, was that power used as a punishment as we theorized in the last video, or is he performing a similar ritual to the Elden Beast, about to turn this into a sword, just like what happened to Radagon? I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Now one other theme that we've been talking about in relation to the trailer are dragons, more specifically, Dragon Communion. And that's because Mesmer's eyes in the trailer are the same as those the player gets after partaking in Dragon Communion. Now that's nothing new, but aside from Mesmer's one eye, we haven't had a whole lot of other connections. But another thing we talked about in the last video were all of the connections with the DLC trailer to the Crucible. Now there are a plethora of connections between dragons and the Crucible, but the art of Dragon Communion comes much later in the timeline. But one observation that ties this back to the DLC trailer is that the Altar of Dragon Communion itself is adorned with the head of a lion. Now lion imagery is all over Elden Ring, but it was also prominently featured in the trailer, with of course the lion dance boss fight being one of the major highlights. And then later on in the scene we see the player casting a new spell. We can see two statues of lions beside them, but these lions have horns. Now it is a somewhat superficial connection, but given all the crucible imagery in the Land of Shadow, it's possible 
possible that followers of Dragon Communion may be a big part of the DLC, likely a force that Mesmer would employ, apparently seizing any manner of heretical power. Which makes me also wonder why Banished Knights can be found around Faramazula, as well as the Cathedral of Dragon Communion, and use dragon spells themselves. They also have a dragon ornament on their helm, and even a little horn on their shoulder pad. And given that they were eventually exiled, sent to the fringes, adds credence to the idea that the Crucible was once celebrated, and likely still is in the Land of Shadow. But speaking of something that used to be celebrated, I really like this next theory. In the base game of Elden Ring, there's been one item that's been subject of a lot of mystery around a location that may or may not exist, and that is the Sun Realm Shield, which is a pretty rare drop from those who live in death. But take a look at this description. Shield of Honor depicting a city crowned by the sun. It has seen better days. Much like the wear up on the shield, the seat of the sun is long faded away. Now we've talked quite a bit about what this seat of the sun could be. Possibly Langdell, Castle Soul, perhaps even Farah Missoula, or maybe the shield is just a clever nod to En Orlando, and nothing ever really stuck. But recently, we took a close look at some concept art that you can see at the end of the DLC trailer, one of which is this image here of a castle beneath the shadow tree, and as pointed out by Zlovsky over on Twitter, it appears to look really similar to the castle depicted on the Sun Realm shield. Now of course they're not one to one, but taking into account that the Sun Realm shield is a sort of rough illustration of this supposed castle, we can identify quite a bit of similar features, notably the way the tops of the towers are constructed. Now we actually get a pretty good view of this castle in the trailer if we zoom in really closely. It's dead center and looks more like two towers than a castle, so if we are seeing its depiction on the shield, it's from a different angle. But you can notice the very top of it is almost identical to the one we see on the shield. But beyond simply visual evidence, let's consider the idea. What does it mean to be the seat of the sun? Well in the opening shots of the trailer, we see this really striking archway beneath the shadow tree, almost as if it's catching the sap. And we can see our castle in question from the concept art right in front of it. And it's a castle that sits almost immediately under their Erd tree. Now in pretty much all regards, at least in the lands between, the Erd tree has essentially replaced the sun. And I'm sure it was no different for the land of shadow before its calamity, which is also a realm that's fallen far from its glory. But wouldn't it be pretty ironic if this sun realm and its seat of the sun were actually the land of shadow all along? Also, I do find it pretty ironic that the shield drops from those who live in death, and there are just numerous spirit graves all over this place. But it's just a thought. Anyways though guys, I hope you enjoyed this really disorganized ramble of a bunch of ideas I've been mulling over over the past week. I'm mainly putting these out there to start a conversation, because I'm curious to hear what you guys think. We got a few more months left until the DLC drops, and this is the best time to have these kinds of ideas, because nobody knows anything for a fact. It's pure fun and speculation, and I enjoy when everybody gets in on that. Anyways though guys, if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to leave a like on it. Let me know all your thoughts down in the comments section below, and subscribe if you're new around here. But with all that, I will catch you in the next one.